Some God, you're always right there with us. You never leave us nor forsake us. I think about that poem of uh, footprints in the sand. And we, we get the big head thinking that God's gone. I'm going through this sickness or disease. I'm going through this financial difficulty. And I don't feel God. But he didn't go anywhere. Feeling because you got away from him. I used to hear one preacher say, you know, when, when the word of God gets dry, you, 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 you sweat it with the brow, the sweat off your brow. Wet the word of God. Get close to him. Draw close. He won't leave you. He's going to make you and he's going to say, now come on. face those fears, it disappears, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. When we stand in your love, we stand in your anointing. We stand because you are in us. You, you poured out your spirit within us. It's an amazing thing that you do. And so, God, tonight we, we're going to stand in your love. We're going to praise your name. We're going to give you glory, God, tonight in our praises. We're going to give you praises, God, for who you are. Jesus' name. I sing praises to your name. Oh, praises to your name is so much higher than all names. Amen. All honor to your name. Oh. 
see, the world will know and they'll give glory, God, for what you've done in each of us. Everybody, right where you are, I want to um, go ahead and bring at Jay. I want to do something, probably one of the greatest privileges that I'll have today. Thank you, Jay. And is that I want to pray for you all. Father, we just come tonight. I 
thank you for this privilege. I thank you for these people, these men and women, children in the nurseries and kids' ministry and youth ministry, the adults, all those that are in prison watching tonight, those watching by internet, my mom that's watching online tonight. Lord, I thank you for this family here at 2910 Canal Terrace. I thank you, Lord, that we're not perfect, but God, I thank you for each and every one. I thank you that we gather into this place week after week on Sundays and Wednesdays and and we begin to converse one with another, begin to build relationships, Lord. And I thank you that it isn't just small talk, but we are genuinely beginning to know who each other, who each one is. And Lord, we're building those relationships. And Lord, I pray that you would touch each one tonight. God, only you know where each one is. You know where people are hurting. You know where the need is. You know where the insufficiency is. And Lord, I pray that you would just meet each one in that place, God, where we need you to step into the situation. And Lord, I pray that darkness would be told, commanded to be driven back, Lord, and that your provision would come, your health, your help, your healing would come, God. I I pray, Lord, that you would split the Red Sea in someone's life, Lord, and may they walk across on dry ground, Lord. I I pray that you would make yourself very real to people tonight, Lord, in a way that they could not deny it. I heard someone say yesterday, Lord, when I was telling others about your faithfulness, and I heard someone say, I'm glad he's been that faithful to you. He will be that faithful to you if you'll just, if you'll just trust him. And Lord, I pray you meet us there in the place of our doubt, in the place of our darkness, in the place of our sin, in the place of our wickedness, God. We lay it all open to you, Lord. We hold nothing in reserve. We hide nothing before you, God. We lay it all out, and we ask that you meet us there. And Lord, I pray that you would just orchestrate this service, Lord. I I, I really don't know which way to go. I don't know what to do, but God, you already have it written out, so God, I'm just going to do my best to trust you. Father, I pray that souls would be saved tonight, lives would be changed, minds would be renewed, bodies would be healed, spirits would be transformed, blind eyes would open, deaf ears would hear, the dead would be raised. Lord, move on this nation. Oh, we need you in a great, we need you in a greater way than we'd ever admit that we need you. But God, we need you to move in this nation. I lift up the President of the United States, the Vice President, the Speaker of the House, God, Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense, God. I I, I lift all members of uh, politics up to you right now, former, uh, uh, the acting right now, the future, God. I, I just plead the blood of Jesus over this nation. Lord, I pray that you would guide every thought, every word, God. I pray that you would bring lies into the light, God. I, I pray that you would would expose wickedness in high places. And Father, may we be a nation that turns back repentantly back to the face of God, asking you to, to wash us in your blood all over again. Lord, may the foundation be rewritten in the United States again that we not only was founded, but we still are a nation who is founded in Christ. We still trust in God. Father, may we have a president that confesses to be a born-again believer. Lord, I'm asking for your kingdom to come and your will to be done. Lord, I believe we're invincible until you're done with us. I believe that that, that hell can, 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 can form weapons, but they can only be formed. They're not successful, so it might be formed, but God, you're the one that makes us invincible until you're done. So Father, I pray you'd move on our behalf tonight, God. Move in ways we don't even know that we need you to move. Lord, I pray you'd go before us now and drive back darkness. I pray that, Father, we would find out that there was a plot made, but it was not successful because you showed up. I believe that's what we saw the other night. So, Lord, we just commit ourselves to you now. 
We say, Lord, we are in desperate need of you. We love you, Father. We praise you. We give you glory and adoration in this place. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Why don't you welcome your neighbor, fist bump them, shake their hand, high five them, hug them, whatever you're comfortable with. Thank them for being here this evening. You know, Nan is all you could do to reach that. You know, it, he does it high, so you have to jump, huh? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have a few announcements. Tell your neighbor, don't forget to give. You need to give. It would bless you greatly if you give. God, you, you, you can't outgive God. Um, that isn't cliche, it's the truth. Uh, I, I am living proof. You can't outgive God. And um, praise God. The greatest thing, one of the greatest things you'll do is give to the kingdom. Uh, we have an ice cream sale going on out in the lobby. Uh, that is for uh, every service this month. Everything is $2. Make sure, if you have grandkids, make sure uh, you hype your grandkids up as you send them home to other people uh, out there in the lobby. Um, it, oh, it just just so it it, it is uh, found. Uh, it it, it I, I read somewhere the other day. Where did I read that, Jay? Uh, that uh, I think um, sugar and chocolate does not hype up kids. Um, now some of the dyes and additives that put in does, but that doesn't. Now. I don't know what that tells us, but anyway, I read that. It's interesting, so all of you trivia people can, can keep. We have baptism scheduled for August 25th during our 10 a.m. service. Uh, if you'd like to get baptized, you can sign up on our church app by August 11th. Next Wednesday, tell your neighbor next Wednesday, we kick off our uh, six-week uh, VBS. Then we will kick it off with dinner and a movie. Uh, the movie, we we'll only have one week of a movie. That's next week. Uh, the, the, the next week will be something different. I think it will actually be dinner and a craft. I think on the second week, uh, weeks three through six, that's four weeks, right? God bless you. Man, I feel better after that one. Uh, weeks three through six, uh, we're going to have the actual VBS and we're going to have uh, teaching uh, together with the family. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going with the theme of Indiana Jones. Uh, was that you, Tanya? So make sure you put your fedora on, and I, I strongly suggest you buy a bullwhip. I think every man should have a bullwhip, and I think the women should too. Jesus had one. You want to be like Jesus, right? Get a bullwhip. <laughs> he didn't hit anybody. Were you there, Samuel? I got a theologian down on the front row. Praise the Lord. So don't forget, dinner will be at the Family Life Center at 6 p.m. on every Wednesday. And then our actual service uh, 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 next Wednesday will start at 7 p.m. over in the student's wing. You can bring candy, drinks, and chair. But that's for the student wing. That's for the student wing. No candy, drinks, popcorn, candy in here anytime. And tell your neighbor, pick up after yourself. And welcome all of our men and women up at St. Mary's and, and Mount Olive that is, is watching. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, I started a message last uh, Wednesday on uh, neighbor, uh, the, the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan in Luke 10, uh, 25 through 37. And I was teaching to you how it is actually a parable of eternal life. Uh, it's a parable of eternal life, and eternity is more than just the life you're living right now. Tell your neighbor, there's more than where you are right now. Have you ever, have you ever heard anybody uh, tell you you could do anything temporarily? You can, do, you can do anything temporarily. Anybody ever tell you that? They, people have been telling me that now for about a month with my arm, and you just be thankful it's my right arm that's in a sling, and and, and because I'm tired of hearing that, you know? Well, uh, Pastor, you know, you can do anything temporarily. I know that. And I just want you to know this life here is temporary. So we can do anything temporarily, but this life isn't all that there is. However, the way that we live life here, 
what we do, how we live, will determine what comes next. It'll determine whether we have life or whether we have death. It'll determine whether we're in heaven or whether we're in hell. And I ask everybody a question, where are you going? And I'm not talking about Target. You going to heaven or you going to hell? Well, praise the Lord. Even, even the, uh, the talkable people are, are quiet now. Well, where are you going? Have you made preparations? Are you ready? You know, uh, I, I, I've, got a, I, I've got a dog. Uh, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a year and a half old, and uh, he, he's growing. He's, he's full size, but he's, he's not fully um, uh, mature. And although he looks like a dog, he's still very much a pup. And there's just times he loses his mind. And, and, and we, uh, Tammy uh, Barker, she's been teaching a, an obedience class to, to our, we're, we're not even trying to get our people straight. We're, we're trying to get our dogs straight in this church. <laughs> Bless God, that'll preach. Don't say it outside the church because they'll come up with some kind of rumor about that or something. They're trying to get dogs saved or sanctif- sacrificing dogs or something. God only knows what to come up with. But anyway, we're trying to get our dog. We're even trying to get our dogs right, and and we got a big test uh, coming up Sunday for our dogs, and um and, and and I want my dog to pass the test, and and I can tell him to sit, and he will sit until I release him. I'll tell him to lay down. And I can walk over somewhere, walk away from him, and he'll stay laid down until I tell him to come or until I go back over to him. But there's just one thing. They, uh, uh, I can even, we can even stand in a line and have dogs weave in and out of all the people who's there, and he'll mind his own business. I just, I just, 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 I have a, I have a, 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 a collar. I, I'm, I'm not going to just preach about dogs. I'm going somewhere with this, believe it or not. The key is, Nan, if I can remember when I get there. That, that's the key. So anyway, I'll sit there and dogs weave in and out, and he just kind of looks at him. He doesn't do it. I'm thinking, man, he's getting this. And then Tammy has to come over and has, has to touch their ears, touch a paw, and take a brush down his back. And, and this is, this is he's, he's sitting there. He, he, he looks all prim and proper. He's sitting there until Tammy comes over, and he starts wagging that tail, and he goes into goofy puppy mode, and he loses his ever-loving mind. And I just want to throw my hands up like I don't even know. I don't know if he's going to pass or not. I can't make the decision for my dog. He's got to make that decision for himself. So where are you going? I was thinking about uh, 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 this week. I don't know if I'm going to get this message or not. Uh, This week, uh, Diane Anderson uh, texts Tammy and I from Meadowbrook Mall. Now, Meadowbrook Mall is in Bridgeport, West Virginia. Meadowbrook Mall is a very special place because that's where, I don't know if I've ever told you all this story or not, (laughs) but that mall is where I met my wife for the first time. I think I'm clear. That's where I met my wife for the very first time. And Diane sent me a text of the corridor going down to the food court. And she said, okay, here I am, Meadowbrook Mall. From here, where's the spot? I said, take a hard left. Go almost all the way to the end. And when you get almost to the end, you'll be close to it. They've done some renovating and stuff there, and I don't know if it's still there or not. So anyway, when she texted, I started thinking about that. (sighs) 
See, I was two weeks out from leaving to go to the service. I didn't want a stinking girlfriend. I was going to travel the world. I was going to be my own man. I was going to do whatever the heck I wanted to do when I wanted to do it the way I wanted to do it. So I was walking the mall, me and one of my buddies. And we're walking down the one side, and there was other people walking on the other side. Can I just tell you, there is a path to walking in the mall, and there's a flow. Get in the flow and stop messing the traffic pattern up in the mall. Uh, okay, I feel better. So we were walking in the flow, and, and I, looked over, I looked over across the other side, and I went, well, hello. I mean... Fine, 80s, 80, oh, here we are, here we are, 80s hair, fine. Anybody remember the 80s hair? Woo! 80s was a great time to grow up, wasn't it, Jeff? You had hair in the 80s. I mean, it was a great time to grow up, and, and I was listening, oh, 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 yeah, 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 uh, this is what it was. Stacy, you'll get a kick out of this. I, I was out at youth camp, and I'm preaching, and, and I start all, off with a song, a Michael Jackson song, Man in the Mirror. It, it was, it, it was was written in, I think, uh, 82, came out in 1988, and, and I'm uh, Mason. Mason was there. He was sitting back there, and, and I said, I, I'm go going to let you listen to a song. It uh, came out in 1988. I said, the, the title of it is Man in the Mirror. I said, can any of you people tell me who sang that song? His arm instantly went up. I said, who is it, Mason? Michael Jackson. I said, oh, you like 80s music? I love 80s music. 80s was, it was fun. Compared to the day, shoot far, it was anointed, you know? I mean, the stuff we were into then was, yeah, heck, it was nothing compared to the day, right? Where's I going with that? Oh, eight, 80s hair, I remember. I mean, it was just, and the collars and the, the pop of the pants and just, it was just, it was cool. It was fun. It was when people tried to dress. Anyhow, that's what I saw on the other side, the hair, and she had the looks, you know, and, I, and I'm thinking, hey, and I, and I told my buddy, she had another girl with her, with her, and I'm thinking, well, you know, I get the pretty one, you, 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 got, you get the, I, I mean, I, I thought it was just kind of understood, I saw her first. But even if I didn't, I still got dibs. But, dude, you, you get the other. Uh, nope, nope. I get the one on the inside. I'm on the inside. And she's inside. I get the. <laughs> and that's the way it worked. And, and I saw her. And, and I'm thinking, I don't have a chance. I, I, I don't have a snowball's chance on the equator that she is even going to give me the time of day. Because she is that fine. So I, I'm looking over, and I'm just, and I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm gonna be a fool, okay? I'm gonna be that guy. I'm, Carl, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be a fool. I'm gonna make her know I'm looking. So you all pay attention to what I'm telling. I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you the Bible here. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> I'm, I am. So, so I look over, and I'm thinking, and I, I, I will run into somebody because I am not losing that. And I get to about right here, and she's right there, and she turns and she raises an eyebrow. I said, "Well, hello." And I turned, and I turned. That's all I needed. All I needed was a little, a little invitation, just an acknowledgement. Now, I would have given it a couple more steps and probably followed her anyway because I, you know. But she turned, eyebrow up, what? And, and I'm thinking, this could be bad. She could be looking at my buddy, but I'm thinking, no, it's got to be. So anyway, I turned, and I was like a. I, I, I was like a coon dog on a track, and I'm 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 beating it down the mall, and I'm I'm I get to, I can fa I can walk fast, and now I'm almost almost caught up to her, and she does a quick left, and she goes and she sits down um, at a, a little uh, uh, fountain area that used to be there, and she's sitting on the ledge beside this old woman, and her and her friend is is sitting beside of her, and um, and 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 I, I and I wasn't real gutsy. Uh, in those days, I was I was gutsy enough to to, to uh, make myself look bad, but uh, I, my backbone wasn't fully developed. Anyway, there was uh, there there was a guy there was a guy who worked there. His name was Eddie Starkey. Uh, he was he was a short guy, um, and he had been in a car wreck, and and he uh, he. 
had lost his, he had lost an eye, so he had an eye patch. We called him Patch. And, but he was cool. I loved Eddie. He was just a great guy. And, and, and I saw him. He, he, he worked here at the mall, and I looked at him. I said, hey, Eddie. Eddie. We, I said, hey, I said, you, you, I said, you see that, uh, see that, see that girl sitting over there beside that old lady and, and that other girl? Yeah, I said, uh, won't you walk over there and ask her? I'm teaching you the Bible. Listen to me. I, I, I said, won't you walk over there and see if she'll go to a movie with me? Okay. Yeah, I can do it. He didn't care. He walked over. He said, hey, he said, my buddy Darren over there, he said, uh, he wants to know if, um, if you'll go to the movie with him. And she said, now? <laughs> and he said, yeah, now. And you know what my wife's response, or my, my, my future wife's response was? You tell him that if he wants to ask me out, he can come over here and ask me himself. <laughs> then I felt like a fool. So he comes over. I said, hey, 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 what would she say? <laughs> he said, well, <laughs> she said that if you want to ask her out, you got to go over and do it yourself. I went, I ain't afraid. I ain't afraid. <laughs> so, so you know how I, I'm just going to be, a, you know, I, I'm a teenager. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm full of testosterone. I'm like, yeah, I get by, you know, I'm like, well, you know, I, you know, <laughs> you know I, I'm pulling a Mike Lytle. I'm, I'm pulling a Mike Lytle. My, my, you ever know some Mike? My, my, yeah. He, how old are you, Mike? 73. And he's looking at me like he doesn't know this is how he walks. But have you seen him walk? Right. You know, he, he's, he's got a little swag, okay? So, so I'm thinking, okay, well, i, I got to play it off now. So I'm, I'm walking over there, you know, and, uh, and I, I walk over and I said, hey, I said, uh, I said, would you like to go to a, to a movie? And uh, she said, yeah, I would. And I said, my buddy wants to know if your friend wants and, and she said, Tracy, you want to go? Yeah, I'll go. She turns to the old lady and said, Mom? We're, and I went, oh, my Lord. <laughs> I'm thinking, I just want to hide, melt. I just ask her out in front of her mom. And I made sure I didn't call her an old lady anymore after that, you know. <laughs> she said, well, of course she said, yes, me, Ma. I mean, I married her. And we had to get started somehow. Yeah, so she said, yeah. She said, yeah, I'd like to go to a movie. So we went to a movie. And, you know, I cannot think of the, for the life of me what movie we saw that night. But I do remember. I splurged. I, I, I took her to dinner after. I took her to McDonald's. She, she wanted chicken nugget Happy Meals, what she want. I can tell you her taste has changed over the past 38 years. <laughs> she won't stop at McDonald's except for the grandkids now. But the point that I want to make to you is that she said, you tell him if he wants to take me out, he can come over and ask me himself. You want to make it to heaven, you have to ask him yourself. You can't have your buddy Patch do it for you. You can't have your mom and dad, a youth pastor, a deacon, an elder do it for you. Now, he wants a relationship with them, but he wants one with you. Why? Why, 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 why does he want that? Could you imagine my wife and I having a relationship, always having to consult Patch? Think about it. That's why God doesn't want anyone else involved in the relationship with you. He wants it just you and him because there's things he wants to tell you just you and him. Do you think I would have ever told Patch, hey, go tell her I love her? I didn't want him knowing that. That stuff, that stuff doesn't belong between anybody else other than you and your spouse. Well, how in the world is God ever going to teach you secrets and tell you the things he wants you to know if you're trusting for someone else to be part of that? It's just, 
Listen, I love my, you all know. You know how I love my wife. This July, July 30th will make 36 years. And I'm telling you, it's been, it's been glorious. I love, I love that woman. She still turns me on. I'm not ashamed, and I'm not trying to be dirty. I, I, I look at her, and she still puts a smile on my face. So, some, some, of the, some of the cutest things, I, I, I don't tell her, but I watch her when she's not looking. And my wife will usually have two sets of glasses on. She'll have, she'll have a set of sunglasses on and her reading glasses. Now, they're just reading glasses, although they're really not. But half the time, her sunglasses are up here. Oh, I'm sorry up here, and her reading glasses are down here, and they're usually like this. When they hit that right there, I'm like, she's fine. <laughs> that, 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 that turns me on just as much as the 80s hair. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is don't ever stop falling in love with each other. Don't ever let it get old. I still flirt with her all the time. I called her Hottie Nani until she made me stop. When the grandkids started calling her Hottie Nani. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm talking about my relationship with my wife. But that's what he wants with you. He wants that relationship so with you that he could call, he, he could call you and, and you know exactly what he means, who he means, and what he means by it. When he calls you son, when he calls you daughter, when what what but but one thing one thing I want you to understand, he will never yell at you. He will never put you down. He will never he will never cut you in a point to tear you up and hurt you. And a lot of times we Christians we 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 get those types of things going on and we blame it on God and it isn't God, it's the enemy trying to take you out, trying to plant a seed of question and doubt, trying to get you to question God. And God will not treat you like that. He will correct you. Sometimes he'll even spank you. That's what he wants. And he doesn't want to get somebody else involved. He wants you. I'm done. I know that wasn't what I had planned tonight, but that's... I, so I'm asking this. Well, Pastor, you're preaching a salvation message on a Wednesday night. Well, bless God, you're right. But I just believe that somebody needs that tonight. Or maybe sometimes, maybe somebody... Ooh. Hmm. Here, how about this? You know, uh, how many of you have been married 20 years plus? How many of you have been married 15 years plus? Oh, heck with that. Let's do 10. 10 and above. Raise your hand. 10 and above. Uh, five. Let's do five. Five years and above. Do you realize you can get in a rut in your marriage? We get that attitude. Well, I got him now. And we, oh, and we stop working. I don't know. I, I don't hear much now. I'm just getting a lot of moans. But we stop working because we got them. We conquered. I don't know if women are like this, but we men are like, yeah, we conquered. I got her now. Bless God, I got her now. I got the marriage license in the safe over there. She's mine. And 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 we stop and we and we stop paying attention. We stop we stop with the compliments. We stop opening the door. We stop pursuing. Well, bless God, we'll just keep on preaching the word. And we'll stop pursuing. And let me tell you something. If you want to keep if you want to keep passion in your marriage, don't ever stop pursuing. Don't stop opening the door. Don't stop complimenting. Don't stop thanking her when she makes you dinner because it is not <laughs> it is her it is not her right to have to make you dinner. You better thank God when when when, when, when your wife will make you dinner. And if it's on the other hand, you better thank God that your husband will make you dinner. But don't ever stop pursuing. What happens to a marriage when it stops pursuing? It runs the risk of getting in trouble. 
Because when we stop with the compliments, someone else might compliment and they might get that eyebrow raise that I got. So you better start pursuing again. Tell your neighbor you better start pursuing them again. And don't let that fire go out. Don't you blame that on him, Tanya. He doesn't laugh on his own. That's, we'll save that for later. Yeah. Same is true with the Lord. We stop pursuing things, it gets cold. Oh, yeah, okay. Isn't it amazing how God will deliver us, how He'll save us, how He'll set us free from alcohol, uh, pornography, drugs, uh, alternative lifestyles, uh, sin of any kind. It, it doesn't matter. Let's just start putting label names on it, and let's just call sin what it is. It's sin. And, 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 and we, we turn from that, and we get connected with God, and after we run with God for a little bit, and maybe the prophetic word didn't come to pass when we wanted it to, or maybe I didn't get my wealth as soon as what I wanted it to, or maybe he didn't answer this prayer. Maybe we'll lay out of a church service. Maybe we'll stop hanging out with our Christian friends and maybe we'll uh, call an old friend back up and we'll do this and we'll get connected back with this one again and the next thing you know, God's fading. Your godly friends are fading, but the old friends are coming back into the view and the next thing you know, you are back where you started from. And that's when we start getting mad at God and blaming God. And I hate to tell you, God didn't do anything except loved you right where you were. We are the ones that left him. He ne- I-, I got so angry. I got so angry when I was reading Facebook last night. It was something about, I can't even remember what it was, but some uh, person put on there, well, God will send people to hell. I beg your pardon. God will not send people to hell. We do that by our church. Choice. We do that by rejection of the Holy Ghost. I am tired of watching people, Christians and non-Christians, put things on God that does not belong on God. We want to make excuses why this didn't happen and that didn't happen, but can we just understand He is the author and finisher of our faith. He will work all things together for my good if I'll just stay faithful. But it happens when we get cold, when we stop pursuing our first love. So wherever we find ourselves, who, Frank, you singing tonight, what's the, you, you playing? Jennifer. Sorry, well, I can't. But let's, let's just say, let me just say, have you stopped pursuing? Have you stopped pursuing your spouse? Have you stopped pursuing God? Well, Pastor, don't you think that's wrong? No, I don't. Because if your marriage isn't right, your relationship with God isn't going to be right. That's Scripture. This, at least it is for a man. Because God told men, said, hey, if things aren't right with your, with your wife, you can't even pray to me correctly. God, know, God, knows we can't, God knows we men can't have two different things going on at one time. We lose our mind. And as you stand to your feet, Look at your neighbor and say, are you still pursuing? Are you still pursuing your spouse? Are you still pursuing God? I want to tell Joey about that. Bless God. Brand new microphone. I think $1,500. No, I'm just teasing. Have you stopped pursuing grown cold if you stop pursuing if your spouse is with you take your spouse by the hand bring him to the altar with you begin to pray together if your spiritual life heck I don't care if you stop pursuing or not if your spouse is beside of you and I take him by the hand get up here around the altar and pray I don't care if you stop pursuing if you're passionately in love with one another it don't matter to me boy destiny isn't it good oh my look at that Desire, heart, heart's desire right there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, okay.
okay, yep, all right, all right, all right. How, how, how about ones that might be here tonight that your marriage didn't, didn't work out the way you had hoped? Maybe it was premature death or maybe, maybe it was a divorce. Well, if you can handle this, I just want to tell you God didn't finish with you yet. And if you'd be willing to leave your seat and get up here around the altar and ask God for a new beginning, I believe He'll give it to you. You're not where you need to be spiritually. If you've grown cold in your relationship with the Lord, if you stop pursuing God, maybe your prayer life isn't the way that it used to be. Whatever it is, you know, you know. God's already dealt with your heart about it tonight. And I'm going to ask any and all that if God has dealt with your heart, come up here around this altar tonight. And just tell Him what it is that you need and expect Him to deliver. You come now. As Frank sings, you come. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who will never he will never I trust in God, my Savior is the one who will never I guess give a little bit of homework tonight, marital week. Those of you who have your spouse beside of you, that you're both here, you both hear this word, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. 
And this is not the wife asking, and this is not the husband asking. This is a word that I believe that God has just given to me to give to you. And I'm asking you to do it. But on your way home, I want you to think about something. I want you to think about the needs that you have in your life. If you're a woman, you think about the needs that you need from your husband. And if you're a, 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 a husband, you think about the needs that you need your wife to fulfill to you. Think about it on the way home. When you get home, I want you to both stay off your stinking phone. Stay off your iPad, your computer. Leave the TV off. Sit down on the couch together. Sit on the side of the bed together. Kitchen table, dining room, what, dining room table, whatever. And I want you to share those five needs with your spouse. Now, a need is something that you can't live healthy without. Not a want. Well, I need a pink Cadillac. No, you don't. No, that Subaru you got will get you there just fine. That isn't a need. That's a want. But I, but I, I will just be honest with you. Studies has, has shown that one of the number one needs in a man's life is sexual fulfillment. So don't be surprised, lady, when you hear your husband, well, I need, I need more sex. Well, that's just what I think. You, you don't understand the male, nobody understands it, but you don't understand the male psyche. I mean, that, that's, genuinely, that is a, for many men, that is a need in their life. One, one, one of the, the um, um, needs in a woman's life generally is... Uh, Oh, it was right there, and I lost it, Jay. I mean, gone. Uh, yeah, affection. I knew, I knew she's gonna work that in her. She needs that. She needs that affection. She needs you to, to. I just want to. I just want to end this. I don't even want to. She needs you to walk in the kitchen and touch her, and it not mean leading to the bedroom. She just. He's just being affectionate to me, yeah. And trust me, man, it'll pay off if you just, you know, it's just. But seriously, talk about the needs. And that's how you pursue. And as we mature, sometimes those needs change. I guess what I'm saying is don't ever stop communicating. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny that it all kind of leads back to the word? See, you get in trouble in your marriage when you stop communicating. Our relationship with God gets cold when we stop communicating. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'd meet us where we are. Lord, this wasn't a direction I thought things were going to go. God, I trust it. God, I have one desire. That's to be found faithful. I, I, I pray that I was obedient and found faithful in what you wanted. So, Lord, I pray now that you would work. You would touch the men, you touch the women, the husbands, the wives, the grandmothers, the grandfathers, right where they are. Father, those who are contemplating marriage, the ones who are um, engaged, Lord, may they talk about these needs now so that it's not a stumbling block when they say, I do. Lord, I pray that you would touch every marriage in this house. I pray you touch the future marriages that are coming Ah. Whew. Wow. Lord, I, mm. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for the five future marriages that's coming. I thank you for the babies that are about to be born to families that's waited a long, long time. Lord, I believe, God, that you are moving and I ask that you touch these men and these women and that you bring the right man and the right woman together to be husband and wife. And Father, I pray that you would touch this husband and wife that's already in existence. And Lord, I pray that you would give them the desires of their heart in a child or children. So Father, I thank you. 
I thank you for this time. I commit this message to you. And Lord, I pray that you would do with it what your perfect will is. I thank you for it. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Oh, just so you know, I preached on marriage tonight. You have not seen my wife. We are not fighting, and she's not mad at me. She is actually in the nursery. Uh, she is covering for Bethany McCutcheon while she is on vacation. And a couple of our nursery workers, <laughs> that's funny, a couple of our nursery workers weren't able to make it tonight, so she's filling in the gap. Um, but, uh, you know, because sometimes we men, we, we, when we get in front of people, we start feeling vulnerable, like, oh, yeah, I'm just terrible being a husband when we tell it, and that's why my wife wasn't here because, and then you can develop all kind of rumors starting there. Well, we're fine. Still looking for that 80s hair, but anyway, God bless you all. I'll see you Sunday morning. <coughs> Thank you for being here.